Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You're back with Darren at Green Pro Clean Limited, window cleaners in Nottingham, Derbyshire, South Yorkshire, and Leicestershire. And today's video is about territory, patches, turf wars, that sort of stuff. And I've done videos on this previously, but I was asked just last night by a young man called Jordan from Newcastle who's thinking of setting up, and his biggest concern is treading on somebody else's toes. So I'm going to cut to the chase and get down to it. In window cleaning in the UK, there is no such thing as patches. There is no such thing as turf. The only patch that exists, let's say for example, well, the, the areas I know well are Nottingham. So let's say for example that you think West Bridgeford is your turf, well then that only exists in your punitive little mind. Okay, you've got to expand your mind and realize that it's not yours. Okay, it, it's open to everybody. Everybody has the right to work it. Everybody has the right to talk to customers there. So if, if your patch, the only area you want to work is West Bridgeford, that's all well and good. But that doesn't give you an exclusive right to it. Nor, more importantly, does it give anybody else an exclusive right to it. Now, what gets me is I see a lot of the time on forums and on uh, uh, Facebook groups and that sort of thing, of uh, people sitting there going, oh yeah, well, if I know there's a window cleaner on that street, well then, out of respect for them, I won't bother cleaning windows on that road because I'm a top geezer and I don't do... Right, block your ears, kids, because we're getting down to the, the, the French language again. We're, we're reverting to the word bollocks, all right? Bollocks, you ain't got no respect. You, you, you've got no balls, is what it is. It's that simple. It's, if you see another window cleaner, or if you're out canvassing, and I've seen this with my own canvas crews before, when we've been out canvassing, and we're out knocking doors on a street. Now, if you're cleaning, say, if you are physically there cleaning, say, number 20, I am not going to go and knock on the door at number 20 and go, do you need a window cleaner, love? Because this guy's a bit of a muggle. No, I'm not going to do that. But, but I am going to knock on number 18. I am going to knock on number 22. And exactly the same on the other side of the street. And do you know what's going to go on in my head? Do you know what I'm going to be worried about the whole time that window cleaner's there cleaning number 20? Not a damn thing. Because it's none of his business. None of his business. As far as I know, he may already do number 18, number 22. And when they come to the door and go, oh no, so uh, this fellow here already does that. So, no worries, love, thank you very much. And carry on. That's all there is to it. He's got no rights, no entitlement, no, um, it's not his birthright or any of that. Once again, kids, French words coming up. Bollocks. It's just the way it is. So, here's the way I look at it. If you want to turn out of a street and there's another window cleaner there and you want to be that one who's like, oh yeah, well, I've got so much respect for everybody that I wouldn't dream of going on another window cleaning path. Right? Mate, you're, you're full of it. That's all, you're just full of it. As I said, you've either got no balls or you're just full of SH1T. That's all there is to it. Now, if that window cleaner would like exclusivity to that road, let's, let's call it First Street, for example. If, let's say, we'll, we'll call him Dave, our imaginary window cleaner, and uh, I do sometimes think Dave is very imaginary, but that's another story. Um, imaginative might be a better word. But anyways, let's just call it First Street. And let's just say that Dave wants exclusivity to the whole of First Street. He's got no legal right to it. He's got no, uh, no right in law to it. But if he wants exclusivity to that whole street and he does not want me to clean windows on that street, <clears throat> well, then he better come up with a decent offer. He better come up with a decent pension, a decent stipend, a decent dividend to pay me every month not to clean windows on that street. It's a bit like the, the, the um, government, especially in America. Uh, I learned this, uh, a friend of mine is a, a big time rancher in America, uh, in Montana. And uh, he has a guy on his book, and when I say big time, he's one of those guys whose ranch is, is literally the size of some European countries. But when I say he is, uh, um, <coughs> What I'm talking about here is he has a guy full-time on his staff, just one guy. And this one guy's job is to sit there and tell my friend, his name's Ron, tell Ron what not to grow. So he will say, right, this season we don't grow corn. The government is paying them not to grow corn because in the food silos, in the storage, there is an excess of corn. So Ron gets paid by the government if he does not grow corn that year. It's money for nothing, literally. Um, or they'll say, all right, this year we're not growing barley or whatever it is. I don't know all the crops out there, do you know what I mean? But oh, this year, don't grow no barley and you'll get a dividend of X, Y, Z from the government. And he makes a mint from it, literally a mint from it. And he gets told what crops not to grow. So he simply tells them he's not growing those crops. The majority of his business is actually cattle ranching, the, the beef industry. Um, 
but once again on his um, I don't know what you call it agricultural land um, uh, is it all agricultural with cattle I don't know but, anyway, but on here is where he will grow crops if he doesn't he gets paid by the government it's the same sort of thing if Dave does not want me to clean windows on First Street he's going to have to pay me he's going to have to pay me to stay off it he's going to have to to give me a cut so I've got a bit of bit of hair, bit of fluff bothering me there. He's going to have to give me a cut of the action so that I do not go and clean windows on First Street. Because at the end of the day, if he wants me to respect him, he's going to have to earn that respect. As in buy it, he's literally going to have to pay me to stay off it. Because that's the only way, there's only two ways I'm going to put food on the table. There's only two ways I'm going to put uh, clothes on my kids back there's only two ways I'm going to keep a, a roof over my family's head and those two ways are A I'm going to clean windows and get paid for doing so or B somebody's going to pay me not to do my job that's straightforward that's straightforward so nobody has the rights to it um, in this world of oh yeah respect respect really what well, toss what well, bollocks mate because if you were on a job and the next door house called Dave out to go and give him a quote he'd be there like a rat up a drain pipe like, like, he'd be there like the old sir like the flash it'd be on it like a car bonnet as the kids say or used to say anyway uh, but anyhow so there is no loyalty absolutely none whatsoever over the years i've agreed to stay out of certain areas but that is only when for example uh let's, let's talk about paul my old, old mate paul who now retired to turkey don't know if you still uh check in paul but if you do maybe it's all going well in in, in turkey um but Paul used to buy rounds off me. When I, I'd build up a round, I'd get too big, I'd have work to sell on. I would sell off the work on a particular estate, for example. I'd go, right, I've got 25 houses on that estate, and Paul would buy them off me. But on the, on the agreement that I would agree not to take on any more work on that estate, so he would sort of not have exclusivity to it, because there's plenty of other window cleaners on the estate, but just not me. So when I'd sell him that work, it would come with the stipend that I do not you know, take on any more clientele on that estate. And if I do get any more clientele on that estate, I would pass them on to him. And that was a, a gentleman's agreement because he was paying top dollar for the rounds. So therefore, I would uh, I would agree not to do that. But apart from that, any other window cleaner out there, I don't care who they are. As I say, it's um, it's, it's this misguided notion of, uh, of, oh yeah, well, we're all brothers in arms, innit? Because we're all window cleaners. Nah, mate, we all have a bit of banter on the Facebook. We all have a bit of a, a giggle on the forum, you know? You all write some sarcastic comments on my YouTube. Um, but apart from that, until you want to start paying me to stay out of an area, um, it's not going to happen. There is no loyalty. Now, let's get down to, to the dangerous side of things here. If people, if you're on a round, and I said this in another video, I think I said this in just the last video. We, as, as window cleaners, the, the royal we again, have spent the last 10 to 15 years dragging ourselves, screaming and kicking out of the gutters, doing six, seven pound jobs on our houses that should be 15, 20 quid. Um, wearing track suits, a uh, roll up fag hanging out of the mouth, driving the old Vauxhall Astra, 1.6, um, uh, with a ladder on the roof and a chamois hanging off the back, to state-of-the-art vans, state-of-the-art equipment, uniforms, and having pride in our jobs. Now, the ones that, uh, when I'm driving on my round now, when I see the other window cleaners, when I actually do get out and about on a round, and I see the other window cleaners in their vans all sign written up, these days, there's none of this turf business, it's all, me, me, oi, oi, and that's how it goes. The ones that give it all this, you know, thinking it's going to intimidate you, are still the muggles that are driving around in their tracky bottoms with their rolly hanging out their mouth in their Vauxhall Astra 1.2. Uh, I don't even know if they ever made a 1.2. But you get the gist. Um, they're the ones who are like, oh, it's on my turf, right? The professional window cleaners, they realise, they get it. They get it. There will never be enough window cleaners to clean all the windows in England. In NG4, postcode I used to live in in Nottingham, um, there were 16,000 16,000 residential addresses I uh, did a check on the Royal Mail came up with that number 16,000 individual residential properties in just NG4 now a decent window cleaner working at a steady pace um, at, at a fair price can crank out say 500 a month um, that's straightforward 500 hours a month 125 a week call it 25 a day working nice and cushy not straining themselves so if he's done that 500 who's doing the other 15,500 that gives you 
33 more window cleaners worth of work to, to take care of that if the math is right so that's the way to look at it but you owe no loyalty to anybody out there if you're going to get out and graft to, to feed your family i doff my cap to you and do it and don't give a second thought to anybody else or what they want or what, if they think it's their pattern nah don't, don't, don't matter you just crack on with it if somebody phones you up and goes yeah I've got a window cleaner but he's not very good don't try and be one of those oh yeah well no I don't take work off other window cleaners if they're not happy with him it's, it's fine that's, that's, that's on them they can sack him off and job done and then you fill the boots and do a good job it's for example when I am no longer happy with McDonald's I stop eating in McDonald's and I might go to Subway for a couple of weeks instead of going for my regular weekly McDonald's um, and then vice versa when I get upset with Subway I'll go and get a Burger King you know, that's my choice as the customer so don't be giving it none of this holier than thou oh yeah I've got too much respect and all that because that's toss you'll starve you'll starve now lastly I'm going to wrap this up it's gone on too long I'm going to wrap this up if somebody is giving it the large to your face in the street and you are feeling threatened, then you do whatever you got to do to defend yourself. If you are in physical danger, you literally do what you got to do to take care of you and yours. But if they are just giving it the large being an empty, smile nicely. One of the greatest tools in your arsenal is your smartphone. And I say this because if they're giving it the large, you just stand there and you go, nine, nine, nine. There you go. And call the fuzz. They are the largest organised gang in the world that you've got on the payroll. You already pay them. You pay your taxes. You already pay them to do your dirty work for you. It's not grassing. It's not nonsense. It's French time, kitty. It's effing. It is being a grown-up. It's running a business. Somebody threatens you, you call the fuzz. Oh, yeah, I'll tie it down the back of the box. Let's give it some of that, innit? Yeah, you mugs. The people who talk like that are the ones who tend to get their asses kicked far too much. Um, but at the end of the day, call the fuss. Get them to come and do your dirty work. You don't even need to call them, really. Just get your smartphone and go, yeah, mate, let me just get you a photo there. Click, like, oh, that's your car, is it? Let me get your registration there. Click, yeah, I'll take it down to the police station. That's generally enough to make sure you never see that person again. And that's all there is to it. But don't be shy. Don't be afraid of it. I keep looking at the ground. I think I've got some basil growing in the old scrapyard here. That's kind of interesting. I'll investigate that shortly. But yeah, don't be afraid of it, mate. But as I say, if you are in immediate danger then you do what you've got to do. But otherwise, and thank God we've got cell phones. Remember our rotary phones? It would have taken you. For, you would have lost so much money just having to call the fuzz. Nine. You could have cleaned three more windows by now, do you know what I mean? But I'll leave you with those thoughts, boys and girls. There's no such thing as turf. It's open warfare out there. I don't mean warfare, but it's open to everybody. Don't pee other people off. Don't go out of your way to make enemies. You may often find that other window cleaners out there are some of your biggest allies when it comes to building and growing rounds. They will share work with you. They will pass off jobs to you where they've got one job in an area they don't want to go to, but I don't want to let the customer down anymore. You may in turn decide to do the same for them at some point. But these relationships are built up over time. When you turn up on the First Avenue or First Street or whatever you want to call it and you see Dave the window cleaners there in the middle of the road, there could be 120 houses on First Street. He hasn't got them all. He hasn't even got half of them. In fact, he's probably only got maybe two, perhaps three at a push. Perfect, perfect time to just start knocking them doors, chapping them up. And if the other window cleaner's got anything to say, just smile nicely. Thank you very much. Comments in the box below, you know, stick them, stick them down there. If you've got anything mean to say, all right, I'll see you at the back of the bike sheds. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so bang them in the box below. Thumbs up, thumbs down. None of it matters because we're all grown-ups. Um, anyway, I think I am losing my marbles now. I'm going to go and see if I can actually find a haircut in this godforsaken town where everything is closed. Um, anyway, guys, stay safe. Keep your social distancing business going on. And uh, I'll catch you all in the next video. God bless. Ciao for now.